Hey dames, so this week we decided to do it about rape culture. Obviously I would like to put a massive, massive trigger warning at the beginning of this video because it could be potentially very, very upsetting. Um, I found it very upsetting to make. There's a lot riding on this personally, so please be kind and let's ask the question, what is rape culture? There's been so much in the news and on the internet surrounding rape at the moment and nearly all of it has highlighted how little we know about rape and how little society actually cares about it. Rape victims are mistrusted, uh, we're joked about by comedians, accusations are ignored by the police, I mean there's been so much about the Met and um, their sex crimes unit just completely monumentally fucking up recently. Rape victims are sexualized, blamed for what happens, so no wonder very few rapes are actually reported and very few are actually convicted. Rape is not taken very seriously at all. And that's what rape culture is. It's all of the tiny things that build up in society. Every song about men not being able to control their sexual urges. Every advert that's about, you know, if you give some, you'll get some. All of those tiny little things, all of the politicians saying, you know, it's not real rape they all build up and they create a society which legitimizes rape and it enables it to happen because it defends those people who rape and it shames those people who are raped so why does this happen um a lot of reasons uh but like i think and what i'm going to talk about a lot in this video is it's partially to do with society and patriarchy's obsession with sex as a society you know, everything we do is hyper-sexualised, uh, right down to burger adverts, for God's sakes. And, you know, actually, the funny thing is, we're kind of idiot children when it comes to sex. We know very, very little about it, and we don't really understand it very well. Our desires are rarely discussed um, without some kind of shaming. Uh, consent is belittled in society, or it's overlooked uh, for fear of, like, hurting feelings, or, you know, wanting to impress someone. You'll kind of go along with what they want. Safe sex practices are laughed at or like completely ignored. We are a society that is completely driven by sex, but we don't really engage with it. Um, we don't question it or look at it critically at all. And so when sex is used as a weapon or when it's used as a tool to silence people or when it's simply not wanted, we get cognitive dissonance in our heads and that's when your brain is holding two conflicting views and you kind of jar a little bit because you kind of see both of them as fact and you're like well how can these things both be true and that's because on one hand we've got society telling us that sex is always good always pleasurable always wanted we must always want it it's like our key objective in society versus the fact that sometimes we just don't want to have sex and obviously through the stories of rape victims coming forward it can be used to commit a horrible horrible crime and so when we're faced with the reality that sex can be dangerous or degrading or traumatizing a lot of people's first reaction is to kind of not believe it and question the victim um, and that's where a lot of victim blaming comes from when people are like well you must have done something to lead him on and that kind of thing i think it comes from a fundamental lack of understanding about sex which really needs to be addressed in our society we still feel so much shame and guilt about our sexual desires and, you know, the sex that we have in our society that instead of talking about our own experiences and feelings, we kind of silence people who speak out and thus legitimise a really, really horrible crime by, you know, asking what a victim did to deserve it and by slut shaming or prude shaming um, because sort of the media and things like that are constantly telling us that we always want to have sex and so we disbelieve anyone who says that that can't be the case even though it's a completely horrible horrible thing which is why it is imperative to believe victims when they do come forward because a lot of people don't really even understand that what has happened to them is rape a lot of people say like oh yeah well you know we're married that's just what to expect like well, I went out on a date with him and made out with him, then, so, you know, what was I thinking? And there's a lot of, like, internalised victim blaming, and so I think, you know, when people do come forward, we just have to believe them and support them. This whole sex is good narrative, I think, is also partially where the uh, strangers raping in alleyways kind of idea comes from and how it's spread in society. 
because even though statistically we know that people are more likely to be raped by people they know, um, we still choose to believe this myth because it fits in with this kind of greater narrative in our heads. You know, it's only real rape if it's completely unrecognisable from the sex that we're supposed to enjoy twice a week. And um, not when it occurs, you know, in a marriage or after a date and things like that. And so we kind of divorce this idea of rape and sex as much as possible in our brains. Um, and so where the middle of it kind of get sort of murky in society when really kind of consent should always be very, very black and white and clear, we've kind of muddied it in our brains a little bit because sort of society is telling us that, you know, all of this middle bit is all in the sex and that's all okay because sex is always good. And it's only like this very, very small minority of, you know, violent, stranger rape that's actually a crime and that's the only bit that we can you know take seriously nothing else even though of course that's the minority and this is all the majority so i think that it is imperative like absolutely crucial to empower people with a better understanding of sex a better understanding of rape of consent of desire of fantasy we need to demolish the shame and anxiety that surrounds sex so that we can like really start to engage with it and talk about it and bring it up in conversations and you know really start to understand consent and clear up so much of this kind of myth that surrounds it um and then we can dismantle rape culture altogether because we'll have a much better understanding of actually what consent is and what rape is um and there won't be so much kind of muddying of the water i think anyway um i really really hope that that was okay um this has been really traumatic actually so i hope that everyone's okay i hope that if you've been negatively impacted by this video in any way you, you know you um kind of have someone close to give you cuddles or a cup of tea or something and i'm really really sorry and i love you and um take care i'll see you next week